Thanks, Nikolai, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Nikolai said, my name is Tom Rayner, and I work for a company called Miriota. Uh, it's a company that specialises in satellite communications for small amounts of data from any location on the planet at ultra low cost. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here this afternoon talking about some of the observations that we are making around emerging Internet of Things or IoT applications in the agricultural sector. Uh, from the outset, can I acknowledge that my identical twin brother is in the room. Um, he works for Rural Bank, Will Rayner, and he will be presenting at the dairy session later on this afternoon. So I'm going to ask a favour of you all, if you've got colleagues or friends who are not in this session to go to the dairy session and subsequently go to who they think is Will for a very smart comment about the dairy industry tonight and they get a bit of a blank expression, please apologise on my behalf because I've got nothing to add about the dairy industry whatsoever. Um, Look, I've got about 15 minutes, so we'll quickly talk about what IoT is and what we identify as the Internet of Things at Miriota, and that neatly runs into who we are and the technology that we've developed. And then I'm going to run through a very simple IoT case study around a connected water tank monitor that's out there in the mo at the moment, and then finish with some observations around some of the IoT applications that we see coming up and being deployed now in Australian agriculture. So what is IoT? IoT is a buzzword that stands for the Internet of Things. What does that mean? Well, you can go online and get all sorts of definitions for the Internet of Things, but essentially it's just connecting things, whether it's connecting to the Internet or to one another. Um, it could be anything from a car to a, uh, to a water tank monitor to a watch. This is my Fitbit or my fat bit, as my wife kindly refers to it. <laughs> And I'm not going to be here telling you what the ideal definition of IoT is other than to say that there's one common thread and it's particularly important when you talk about Australian agriculture is that they all rely on connectivity. So obviously Internet of Things without connectivity just becomes things and we've been there for decades. And of course in Australian agriculture that can be a bit of a problem because we've got some clients who are in places like this and IoT connectivity, particularly when you're talking about small amounts of data that has to be at really low cost to make it viable can be a bit of a challenge. We've talked about the, uh, the lack of coverage. About 70% of Australia's land mass does not have any 3G coverage whatsoever, and that takes up a huge proportion of Australia's uh, agricultural land. And of course, you can get connectivity out there using existing satellite services or some sort of terrestrial infrastructure, but it's expensive, and it often negates the benefit that you can get from connecting those IoT devices and often the transmitters themselves have to be quite complex and heavy and expensive and have large power consumption. And then you've got the whole issue around scalability. I'm sure many of you have seen the literature, but we're talking about hundreds of millions, if not billions, of individual connected devices out there, and you need communications infrastructure that can handle those huge numbers of connections. So that leads nicely when we understand the remote IoT connectivity challenge into our company, Miriota. So what do we do? Well, in a nutshell, Miriota has solved the remote IoT connectivity problem. So we were formed in late 2015 to commercialise technology developed at the University of South Australia. There was a $12 million research program looking into this exact problem, how you get small amounts of data back using these new class of nanosatellites as cheaply as possible, while maintaining the attributes of being low cost, being very small, low power and importantly, uh, enabling the huge populations of individual connections to be out there. And so how have we done it? So that is a picture of one of our satellite transmitters. I've got one here in my hand. It's a 22 millimeter by 30 millimeter uh, little bit of electronics, all off the shelf electronics, that anyone can integrate into their device no matter what it would be. So instead of, say, integrating a SIM card and a data plan into your device, you can take one of these and a data plan to your device and get connectivity anywhere on the planet. Um, these little guys send small packets of data, so we're talking 24 bytes worth of payload per individual message, so think of it like a short message service, SMS service, um, at ultra low power to a constellation of low earth orbit satellites. Now if people get excited about the satellites, um, this is a, a video of the three satellites that we have access to now through one of our shareholders, uh, a company called Exact Earth. Um, there are three that we have access to. The movie's not working very well there, but they're actually in polar orbit. So they're actually going over the North Pole and under the South Pole and orbiting the Earth about every 90 minutes. And then underneath that, the Earth is rotating underneath those orbital planes. 
So we actually get global spatial coverage, not real-time coverage, but global spatial coverage with just one satellite. So these things are moving at about seven and a half kilometres a second, and you can see the next generation satellite that will be launching in the next few months. That's a 3U CubeSat, so three 10 centimetre box CubeSats. Um, uh, and we'll be putting that up in the next few months. So very small, um, they're dedicated spacecraft in an altitude of between about 500 and 800 kilometres. So we've got these little guys that send a small amount of data to one of those um, satellites. That's all very clever and all very good, but it's actually not the very hard bit. So this is all off-the-shelf electronics. You can get anyone to do this. Um, even the satellites these days are pretty much off-the-shelf satellite buses, off-the-shelf power management systems and off-the-shelf software-defined radio systems. The real challenge is that when one of our satellites is over Alice Springs, our satellite can see all of Australia. Now, if you've got hundreds of millions of these things talking to the satellite at once, it becomes a very complicated communications challenge. I'm sure everyone here has been to the MCG or Adelaide Oval or something and been at a footy game and at half time have decided to ring up your friend and give them a score update. And the mobile system goes down because everyone's trying to make a phone call at the same time. Fundamentally, that is exactly the same communications problem that we have solved, but not for mobile phones, but for millions of IoT transmissions direct to satellite. So the satellites send the message back down to Earth. We decode the message with some um, advanced receiver software, which hosts most of the IP, and we send the decoded message back to the end user, whoever the end user may be. And that gives you a, um, a solution which uh, is, is global, so we can provide IoT connectivity anywhere on the planet. It's ultra low cost, so we're talking about this device being about $100 now, $50 very soon by the end of the year or so, and most ongoing data subscription costs will be about $5 a month or less, and much less in some large deployments. We can support hundreds of millions of individual connections reporting directly to the satellite, and a big important distinction is it is direct to satellite. So this guy doesn't have to talk to a repeater or another antenna or a base station or an amplifier. If you connect a water tank, the water tank is connected directly to the satellite. And we have a battery life for these things that we are measuring in years. So the example that I'll give a bit later on, we've got four off-the-shelf AA batteries and we're expecting north of two years battery life. You put that all together and you've got a satellite IoT connectivity platform. So to give you an example about how this technology is being used in a real-world example, because it's all you know, sexy talking about satellites and the like, but all we are doing is getting a little bit of data from one location to the next is to talk about a water tank monitoring trial that we've done. Now, we could have used any sorts of, or all sorts of use cases uh, to, to um, show you what we've been doing in utilities, defence, maritime, obviously in agriculture as well. So we'll concentrate on a water tank monitoring trial and a big shout out to the CRC for Spatial Innovation, the Australian Livestock Spatial Innovation Program and the University of New England, among others, who have helped us with this trial. But it was a very simple application, a very successful application around how this technology is opening up IoT in Australian agriculture. So what we did was we took one of these little guys that's being held by our co-founder and CEO, Dr Alex Grant, and we put it in an off-the-shelf enclosure with an off-the-shelf uh, antenna, off-the-shelf pressure transducer, and that is all you need to connect your water tank no matter where you are in the world. Uh, this one is one that's being uh, mounted on a water tank in Armadale. Um, very simple installation uh, exercise. If you can use zip ties and pliers, then you can install them. And then we created a very simple user interface. In this case, it's a, a phone app, so that a farmer, even with their dumb thumbs, can actually look at the screen. If it's orange, go and have a look. If it's red, get out there quickly. You know, very, very simple stuff. But a beautiful application about where a small amount of data, if it's provided at the right cost, can be very, very valuable. Because obviously when we're deploying these things out in Outback Australia, the alternative to having this data is that someone has to manually drive out there and check it. And some of these organisations, I'm sure there are many in the room here today, spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on that very, very boring menial task just to make sure that their cattle have got some water. So the only problem with this, uh, with, with this trial is that the trial has finished and I'm now ringing those farmers and wanting my devices back and they're saying, go away, you're not getting it. Um, so it's a good problem to have. So we've had a look at a very simple use case to get an idea of the flavour of the types of things that we can do. Uh, now I thought it would be uh, appropriate that I give you some of our observations around the types of applications that are coming up in Australian agriculture. And these are just our observations. There's nothing too academic about this other than to say that remote connectivity is obviously one of the barriers to entry to uh, IoT applications in the bush. And so we're getting a lot of interest for people coming our way. And in the main, we see the emerging IoT applications fall in two distinct uh, buckets, if you will. 
First is there are quite application specific examples of what we can do. And then there are more complex, sophisticated, enterprise-wide IoT solutions that are being sought after. So the application-specific things that I'm talking about are as simple as a rain gauge. So a farmer can have a connected rain gauge, so without having to drive out to the far reaches of their property or their other property, they can see how much rain there has been. Same thing with weather stations. Same thing with soil moisture probes. We've talked about tank monitors and we've talked about flow meters. And one of the interesting things is that we're seeing some of our, our clients, who will be the OEMs, the people that take our connectivity solution and put it into their solutions, is having a tank monitor linked to a flow meter. So yes, it's all very good and well to say that there's a, a full tank of water, but is the water getting out of the tank and into my trough? You link it to a flow meter, you say, yes, the tank is full, and yes, there's 150 lactating cows on that water point, they're drinking about 200 litres a day, everything's OK. Asset trackers for all sorts of different assets, water meters, aquifer monitors, and I think eventually ear tags. So we're not that far away from getting this system on a chip, and we're talking about getting very close to having a discrete satellite connected ear tag where they don't have to be within range of any other type of application. So they're all application specific, quite discrete examples. Um, to, uh, to Peter's comments earlier today, I mean, we see the adoption of this being quite rapid because this is not just the Internet of Things or IoT, we call this IOPT, this is Internet of Profitable Things. Farmers make money out of this as soon as they put it on there and it's very easy to articulate the benefit of doing so. The other side of the things that we see are these enterprise-wide solutions and these are a bit more complex. To give you an example, we had a winery come to us the other day and they came to us because they identified that low-cost comms was stopping their IoT rollout, but they wanted to monitor a grape bin from the, from the vineyard to work out what grapes were going into the bin, then to track it on the truck, then when it got to the and let the winery know when the truck was going to be there, then once the, once the bin got to the winery, track it within the winery to make sure that the Shiraz was getting crushed in the Shiraz bin, then link the quality of the fruit back to the individual vineyard so that the farm manager could make some management decisions about next year's fertiliser applications, et cetera, et cetera. So, mate, we just deal with satellites. That's, that's very complicated. But um, you can see that there is value in doing that, but you're talking about a whole range of different sensors, a whole range of different connectivity platforms, a whole range of software that needs to be interoperable, et cetera, et cetera. It will be coming, and I'm sure that there will be people that come up with those solutions, but they're a far more complex proposition. Same thing with software as a service farm management platforms like AgWorld. Um, they want to install various different sensors around the place to make sure that they are all interoperable to get some decent uh, data out of it. Logistics, a lot of feedlots are looking for updates about um, the feedstocks that they've got in their feedlots. Paddock to plate tracking, obviously, and multi-site supply forecasting, uh, particularly the large corporate farmers who want to get an understanding of their likely offtake in, out into the future and making sure that they understand that they can meet their future customers' needs. And again, ear tags. So there's some really interesting stuff that's been doing in that space, uh, and we look forward to hopefully our connectivity solution being on use on a few of them. So look, um, in summary, we think there's a, a really exciting path forward for IoT applications in Australian Ag um, coming forward. Uh, we are lucky to be involved with it because we think we solve a fairly unique problem in this space. Um, we're not an ag tech company per se, but a lot of our clients will be and they'll be installing our stuff into their stuff. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to present today and obviously looking forward to any uh, questions that you may have. <laughs>